the actual wrestling event was um I thought that the match uh I thought the Lesnar number one, I did not think that Lesnar and Cody would go on second. I did not think that would be the second match of the night. Right. I did think that the the physicality of the match for the first ninety percent of it was what it would be. The same as is where Cody basically takes, you know, the beating of a lifetime, and then uh, you know Brock ends up stopping himself, and then Cody hits him with three hundred and fifty five cutters, and boom! Finally, he 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 beat Lesnar. But the thing that I was afraid that they had pushed, like, I wasn't, I, I didn't know how, how manufactured Cody was, if it was because of the Peacock special and like all the, like all the things is just like, is the machine pushing him or are the people really behind him? And well, um, it could be both. Yeah, it could be both. But I think that, that Brock, and I found out this later um, that Brock, it was not in the script, nor was it uh, discussed that Brock at any time would raise his hand after the match was over, would shake his hand and raise his hand. So I think that was, um, and I think that was impromptu on Brock's behalf because it was like he, he like Brock felt he was worthy. And I think that did, uh, I mean, just volumes spoke volumes for how Br- Brock felt about Cody, mm-hmm. which changed my opinion because I haven't, I've never been in the ring with Cody. So I, I, I just don't know how, but obviously you feel that energy when you're in the ring with a guy that he is over and he's super, he's, he's super over because I mean, Monday night he had two sing-alongs. On the way down, he had one halfway down where he stopped and he touched the floor and he did the little thing. And then he had one when he got to the ring before he got in, another little sing along. So, two sing alongs. That's an indication of what's to come. That's you're, you're over. You're over. Yeah. So, I was, but I was very happy because um, the roster's not that, you know, it's not that full. So, you can't, you know, you can't afford to, 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 mishandle the talent and they didn't him and he's he's over and i'm, I'm i mean i'm pr- i'm proud of him because I, I think that um i think he really loves this business absolutely i mean the you know it's just, he's, him, yeah it's... it's just i'm just i'm happy for him i'm happy for you know for for i mean for dusty i'm happy for the Rhodes family his his mom is a sweetheart and she never doesn't come and say hello to me anytime she, that we run into each each other. So, when you was that how you would have booked it? It was the rubber match. Um, you, you can't. I mean, what, what are you going to do? You're going to beat Cody all the way to WrestleMania, then he's going to, you know, do the banana peel with Roman. I mean, you got to give him some. You know, to beat Brock is, and it's hard for me, you know, it's it's hard for me f- to watch anybody beat Brock. Because I just, I've, I've, I've heard so many people in the mixed martial arts that like Lesnar just kind of was, you know, he just decided he was going to do this and he was just, he was so strong and so fast and he was just a monster. You know, if, 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 if there was no weight limit, and the UFC and Brock, Brock could have went in there at like two ninety eight. Oh, no! But that's what I'm saying. Like, for, uh, like, would that that believability part of you knowing what you know about Brock would would that be weighing into your making it more difficult to make a decision, or is it? Hey, it's just wrestling. It doesn't really fucking matter what I know about Brock. No, I I, I, Brock I think it. Yeah. Yeah, I think it I think it does. I think that it, it definitely but you know what when when I um I want when I watched it back and at the end of it, I just I, I just basically want I, I watched the last three, four minutes of the match and then the the, the the after and I watched that back and it's like Cody's not like Cody's 
is big. He's not that much smaller. I mean, he's smaller than him, but I mean, it's it's not like you know, like Cody's got a you know, is has got some size to him. Right. Well, I'm not. We're not, we're not talking about height here. I'm. I'm like. Yeah. Overall, I'm talking, the, yeah. the mass of of Brock is. Well, just Bro- Brock is. Bro- Brock is, you know, I think I don't know who used the term, but I saw it on. But Brock is a unicorn. Like they're they're just they're, there's not when when Brock decides he's not going to do this anymore, there won't be anybody that comes along that people say, "Oh, you know who he's like? He's like Brock Lesnar." True. Even even if you look at the other MMA guys who've come before, um, none of them. None of them go near. What none of them were Brock comes to represent. None of them. None of none, none of them were as good as Brock was at a collegiate level to come in and be. And him and Kurt came in at the same time. And the hardest thing you have when you've got shooters is they've been taught their whole life: do not get on your back. And in pro wrestling, you have to flat back. So that's always been the hardest thing for, for, for a shooter to learn is like to make it's almost like, OK, everything you've learned since you were five years old, take that, you know, put, put it out the window, because now you everything you do is going to be based on you kicking out on two and a half. Mm. So. But both Brock and uh, Kurt Angle were, were just amazing at how quickly they took on to the uh, to the pro circuit. And I forget it was the WrestleMania. Um, uh, it was one after Toronto. Was it? Did they wrestle in Toronto? Let's see where it was, guys. Was that where, where Brock missed that moonsault and, and a normal human would have died? Was that was that Toronto? That wasn't Toronto. Dominic says, what "Was it Seattle?" Yeah, it was Seattle. It was that drowning pool played beforehand. Um. Uh, then Drowning Pool played when Triple H came down. That was a great. I was I was injured. I had my quad or some, I had some kind of injury, but uh, maybe who knows? Mental. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> that was the one where 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 me and Steve just hung out. Steve Austin. Um, but yeah, he um. He, you know, for him to be that good coming out of college, to be that good as a pro, and then to go to UFC and become the world uh, heavyweight champion in UFC, um, it just, you know, there's just nobody's going to have that kind of credentials. Brock Lesnar. I want to get back to SummerSlam for a minute. I don't want to get off this here. The uh, the moment at the end of the match, the, uh, the, the handshake, the raising of the hand, and the... Um, that moment in the ring, which, I mean, we've seen that stuff before, but I did read that Brock was going to be going away for a while. So I thought it was a, uh, a significant moment. And, uh, Paul said at the press conference that it was unplanned, that it was, uh, right. Was something. So does anybody know why Brock's not going to be around for a while? Yeah, I didn't see. Uh, I don't think it's injury. Uh, according to, I think uh, I'm going to read the quote exactly here. So, I, according to Meltzer, I don't think it's injury. Uh, Meltzer said Brock was originally advertised for one of the pay per views later this year, but he's not going to be on it. He's going to be gone for a while, no time soon. As far as the next four months or something like that, he's not going to be on anything at that point. He will be back from Mania season. That's the situation with him. So I don't know. But the fact that he was gone and took the opportunity in the center of the ring on the pay-per-view to do that with Cody, which was not part of the angle, was uh, was a moment for sure. The, uh, the, um, the trilogy having ended. Um, there's a callback to uh, Kurt doing it. Anyway, the reason I'm asking about this is because you, of course, you know, the curtain call moment in Madison Square Garden. A little different because um, was uh, you guys were exiting the company and it was a farewell. But moments that, 
improv moments by workers, uh, breaking kayfabe a little bit. Were you ever, um, of course, you know, we know about the current quote, but were you ever moved to acknowledge the victory of the person if it was not planned or part of the part of what was discussed after the match just because you thought maybe the match was so good like fuck i had a great match with him i'm going to take an extra moment to I put remember him over. there was there was a period where when lex uh lex was just super over and we ended up at auburn hills and it was just like we couldn't wait until like for for Sting to to to, to for Starcade, we couldn't wait that long because it was like Lex needed like Lex needed to you know to to, to get the strap even if it was just for a couple of weeks because he was just red hot and I remember mm-hmm. us all um, at that TV going and 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 just talking it over with Eric. And Hulk was, you know, on, on point with it, saying, um, like, yes, like, he, he felt it, too. Like, like Lex is just super hot right now. And everything. You know, it, just, it was just time to do that favor for Lex. So that would probably be the closest thing I could think of, of, of just because the, the thing was, it was supposed to be, I think it pissed Steve off. Hmm. I think, yeah, because Steve was pissed that, that the belt got, you know, but it was a short period of time. I don't even know how long Lex had it for. But I know that he went, I'm pretty sure it was Auburn Hills, if I'm not mistaken. He went over at Nitro. Hmm. Right. It's a cool moment like when stuff like that happens. Yeah. I think any time that, that somebody's, um, I mean, because one thing about being a pro is you, you, you learn to listen to the people. And you can really hear the people, and you know when you have the people, or when somebody else does. And I'm sure that Brock did. I'm sure that when Brock, you know, it's it it's almost when somebody beats you for for the third, you know, two out of three, and now you're in that position where they're handing him the belt. Mm. It's it's so fucking flat for Brock not to do that for Brock to just slide underneath the bottom rope and give Cody that moment without the endorsement is, is kind of, you know, like what it would have been Brock, anticlimactic after right, yeah, the last I mean, year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so it just, and, and I'm sure that Brock didn't put that kind of thought into it. It just went, I'm sure Brock at that moment just, it just didn't feel right and without it. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm guessing. I mean, you know, yeah, well, because Brock definitely, you know, definitely, you, you, uh, just one thing that I've learned from watching him is he doesn't get the credit that he should for his psychology, for his, his ability to sell, for his ability to sell for anybody. You know, he's just, He's a pro's pro. Excellent. I'm a huge fan of Brock Lesnar. 